ای جلوی چه دستوفه چلوی از چیزوس نمریومه ام جس ام جس او برسو Give myself away I give myself away So you can use me I give myself away Give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Lover of our soul, our Father, our Maker, the Lifter of our head, we worship you as an awesome time as this moment, Lord. The time that you have prepared to do awesome wonders in this place, Lord. We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will move through every aisle, every role that you, this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that no life will be left behind in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, Lord, that word you, are, you have prepared from the bakery of heaven, Lord, for we, your people, Lord, Daddy, Lord, let it come flood with power and authority this day, Daddy, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we bless your name, Lord, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Good morning, church. You may have your seat in the presence of the Most High God. I welcome you to this tenth awesome time of the seven glorious Sunday. A time that I have no doubt within my spirit that you're going to rise by the power of God. By the blood of Jesus, you will be ignited to run your race. And you will not just only run, but you will reign in Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord. The title of my message this morning is Rising, Running, and Reigning in the, on the Wings of Faith. Rising, Reigning, and Running on the Wings of Faith. And our scripture we'll find in the book of Isaiah 40, 30 to 31. I will not bother you know, explaining what rising means, what running means, or raining means. If you have not been part of the Seven Glorious Sunday, for our guests, if you go onto our YouTube channel, you will find the message that King James did an awesome time in dissecting those three words. But after we've heard what it means to rise, to run, and reign, we need to see in the light of the wings of faith, how can I rise? How can I run? And how can I reign and dominate in any situation? Praise the Lord. Isaiah 30, Isaiah 40, sorry, verse 30 to 31 says that even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumbles and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on mount on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Hallelujah. If you understand the story of Isaiah from the beginning till, until it get to the point of chapter 40. In the beginning from chapter 1 to chapter 39, we realize that it was God calling judgment on Israel for them sinning against God. But there was a point that turning point took place that God had to prophesy hope through faith into them. For them to lift up from the place of depression to the place of, of awesome wonder, of flowing and riding and soaring on the wings of eagle, which started from the book of, from chapter 40, which says, it, the opening of that chapter said, comfort, comfort, I say to you, comfort my people. Because your warfare is over. 
I have come to tell someone today, no matter how long that situation has been going on in your life, the Lord of Heaven's army, the Lord of Angels army is saying to you, comfort, 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 comfort. The warfare is over. I do not care how long you have been at that stage. I do not care how long that situation has been asking where is your God. I have got good news for you today. That my brother, my sister, comfort, 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 comfort. Because the Lord of angels, I mean, saying your warfare is over by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I cannot hear the voice of faith. Amen. My brother, I don't know you. I don't know you. But as you walked in, I will tell you what God told me about you. I don't know what the situation is. Nobody has told me anything about you. And liars will not go to heaven. But God said I should tell you that mercy will speak on your behalf. That by the virtue of what your family is doing, that mercy will speak speak in that situation. It's not because you qualified for it, but because him, God, chose to do work with you in mercy. The warfare is over. But my brother, in the same sense, God said I should tell you that the spirit of alcoholism needs to depart today in Jesus' name. I don't know about you. I'm not sure if I've met you before. Why I'm speaking as the Lord God of heaven has asked me to tell you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every spirit of alcoholism to come out of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Every generational yoke and bondage of alcoholism, it ends with you today in the mighty name of God. As you have stepped into this sanctuary, by the virtue of the blood of Jesus, it is over in the mighty name of Jesus. But my brother, you need to give your life to Jesus. Because for a change to come, to rise, to run, and to reign, it revolves a relationship with Jesus. And I'm going to lead you to Christ. Because today, a 360 degrees turnaround must take place in your life. In the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. I confess you that you are my Lord and Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. That you will lock the keys to my heart. And you will be the owner of it, Lord. As from today ends forth, I declare the Lordship of Christ in me. Because the blood has been shed for my life. And that blood speaks life concerning me. Because I am not damned for hell. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, I pray for your son this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree his freedom today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree a new song concerning you. Your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ by the blood of Jesus that the blood will go to the high places. It will go to the lost places and speak life concerning you in the name of Jesus Christ. I send the fire of the Holy Ghost to your village right now where that shrine concerning your family is that is the determining the, the affairs of your life and your siblings. I decree that today you have been carved out by the blood of Jesus Christ. As from today, you begin to rise, you begin to run, and begin to reign in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree into your life the years with the locusts and the cattle was as eating, it's redeemed back unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are no longer a lawful captive of the enemy because the blood speaks 
concerning you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decree that good news, that letter of good news shall reach your hand. And not only would you reach your hand, but you rejoice and give glory to God as you come back to this mountain to tell God, I am grateful. See at the spirit of the most high God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the book of Isaiah says that we, should need, we need to renew our strength. When we're talking about renewal, we're not just talking about renewal physically. We are talking about renewal mentally, renewal spiritually, and renewal physically. How do you renew yourself? In order to rise, you cannot rise as you rose yesterday. You cannot get up with the same vigor you get up yesterday. The Bible says that every day is filled with its own evil. So when you are rising, you are rise within a newness of way for the challenges that is placed before you. You know, when the law was passed according to Daniel chapter 6, that Daniel was not prayed. There was conspiracy. And as that conspiracy was going on, God knew Daniel is blameless. God knew that Daniel was at that place of renewing himself daily. The Bible talked about it that three times daily, Daniel stood before God to make himself blameless. I have come to say to someone today, because you are in the sanctuary this morning, that the blood of Jesus, the blood that is speaking life concerning every true believer, will speak life concerning you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever den of lion has been assigned for you, the Lord will rescue you by the, his right hands of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when we're, when we're talking of renewal, rising, <coughs> excuse me, when we're talking of rising, <coughs> when the mother eagle has a baby, <coughs> for sometimes the baby are in the nest. For about three months, the mother eagle will feed the baby, will feed the baby, <coughs> will bring food to them until the until the nest becomes too small for them to stay in. It will get to a stage, the mother eagle will pick up the first child, will say to the child that it's time for you to rise from your stagnant position. And what happens? The mother eagle will pick up the child and take him to the highest level of rising and will release the child because he wants the child to find the footing in life. And when the child goes, it comes down. The physics will help us. In a big strength, in a big force coming down. When the child is about to touch the ground, the mother eagle captures it and causes it to rise up again. And that's the relationship God has got with you and I. God knows we need to get to an altitude in life whereby he needs to let go for us to rise, to find our footing to rise in him. And you know, with the mother eagle, he does that for every child until they begin to be able to rise of their own accord. I want to say to someone in the house this morning, that problem, that situation was not meant to drown you. It was meant to take you to the highest altitude and so that when you are falling down, you have the grace to be picked up by the power and the strength of the wings of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? That is the purpose of the picking up. And one thing with the, with the eagle, when you look at the eagle, when the eagle is rising, the eagle, when the mother eagle is doing that to the eaglet, the eaglet will be flapping his hand. In the flapping of the hand in trying to rise, it is when we go through torments in life. There are times God does not want us to fly, to flap our, our, our wings. He wants us to come to that state of calmness and stillness that will hear what God is saying in that situation so that we can get the secret key to our rising. If you look at the characteristics of an eagle, an eagle never flaps his wing like any other bird. He releases it in the fullness of its glory and he soars. Why? Because he looks for the right wind that is moving. When the right wind, because he soars on the winds, so he does not struggle in life to achieve what he needs to achieve. 
and we employ us to go and study the characteristics of an eagle and apply it to our Christian life. When we apply it to our Christian life, we will know no matter what the circumstances or the situation is, we do not need to fret. We just to know who is beside us, who is with us, and who is in us. Who is on the journey with us? Who is going with us? The king said to, the, to Daniel, that Daniel, as your Lord rescued you, he said, yes, my God has rescued me. Until we know to hear and walk with the Lord, then we will know how to rise. And one thing in life about the eagle is that the eagle, no matter who the opposition is, he would, when the time, there's only one, but I'm not sure the name of the bird again, I think it's a condo that can attack, that's quite bigger than the eagle. And the eagle knows that the only way to deal with this other prey is to go high and face the sun. He goes straight into the sun where he knows nobody dares to come into this altitude. And that's how we need to rise as Christians. That no matter what the situation, in the book of Songs of Solomon, he says that we should go to our, no, in the book of Habakkuk, he says we should go to the, our, our watchtower, meaning we should rise to the highest places of the highest places and begin to deal with situations from that place of higher altitude. My prayer for you in the house this morning is that you will rise above circumstances and above situations. I don't know that situation that's been asking where God is. It may be a health challenge. It may be whatever. It may be your job. It may be your immigration. It may be an exam that you have been reading and failing and failing. But I want to tell you something. That irrelevant of that situation. God is asking you, come up higher with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what's wrong with us Christians in this present age is that we are looking for someone to say, Thus saith the Lord, or someone to pray for us. We do not realize that what God has put into you and I, it is higher to make a decree. When we release the word, He said, I will decree a word and it shall be established. That is what the word of the Lord says. That as you speak forth the word, the word will, has no choice but to do what you are sending out to do. Hallelujah. So, the words I speak are life for my rising in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen? Are you still with me? The words I speak are for my rising and it's for my lifting. One thing, the characteristics of the eagle when he's rising in order to run, it does not care the storms that he sees. He rides the storm. He runs on the storm. When you look at, if you, if you can put a speedometer on him to, to, to check the altitude that he's going, we will realize that it's on a different altitude as he's rising up. Brethren, I implore you in the house this morning, why don't you rise up on the wings of eagle and take you to yourself to that altitude by the power of the Holy Spirit. That altitude where you begin to see raw manifestation of God's glory. Hallelujah. The Bible says we will mount up with wings as eagle. How are we mounting up? Are we mounting up in the place of prayer? Are we mounting up in the place of the word? Are we mounting world up in the place of relationship? I thank God for the renewal that is happening all over the world. We are all beginning to bring back the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the tongues of fire is being released all over the world. You know, you know, People, if only we can see in the realm and the, in the state that we are in, what God is doing, that we as his children will rise to a greater place. We will understand and not use this time commonly. I always tell people, don't waste my time because I know where I'm going. And because where I know where I'm going, I need to keep my vision 2020. Single focus, not being distracted. One thing you need to know, there are time wasters who knows where you are going. And they will waste your time if you allow them to waste your time. But God is saying, use that time diligently in seeking, seeking me. And in seeking me, God will release the secret that you need for every situation. Amen. About three Fridays ago, was it three Fridays? I think it was three Fridays ago. I just got up. God showed me a, a vivid revelation. The revelation God has been showing me now is as if it's, it's happening real. Because when I get up, I think to myself, oh God. This is real. And within a few days, I see it manifesting one after the other. You know, exact way God has shown me. I heard God told us that Jesus' pavilion, 
Our time has expired in this place. Three Fridays ago, it was so vivid that what happened last week, I was not surprised. The only thing I could say to God is that, God, we need the 7,000 armies, the heavenly army, the holy armies that has not bowed themselves to bow, that will assist us in locating where God has determined for us. Amen? So, what am I trying to say? In rising, in rising, God will always give you the revelation of what you need to run with. God will never hide. He said, Abraham is my friend. Would I hide anything from him? God will never hide anything from those who are his friend. He is a God that will always give an expo before the exam comes. The only thing is that we do not take recognition of what God is saying in that very hour. What is God saying to you? What is God saying in your rising? That rising above restraints, rising above limitation. What is God saying to you? What is God saying to you that my daughter, my son, it's time to arise in the name of Jesus Christ. My decree over you today in the name of Jesus Christ. That no matter what the situation or circumstances will be, you shall soar high in the name of Jesus Christ. You will soar high spiritually in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will soar high in your marital home. You will soar high in your finances. You will soar high in your education. You will soar high in your job. In the name of Jesus. Among your peers, by the virtue of the Holy Spirit, you will soar higher in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As the glory of the Lord beams out of you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things and the purpose of the wings of the eagle is for it to reign. One thing with the eagle is that it does not mingle itself with any other bed. It does not put its hand to things that are not straight with God. He rises as a king as he is, even though he's not the biggest bed. Are you rising as the king God has destined you to be? Are you standing in dominion in that circumstance and situation that I know who is with me? Are you saying that no matter what the circumstances may be, I am reigning in it? What does it mean to reign? I said I'm not going to go into meaning because Dick and, uh, James has already said it a few weeks ago. But no matter what the circumstances, reigning means I'm in charge. Hallelujah. I am in charge. We used to sing this song years ago that I, I'm, not, I, I'm not moved by what I see. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I hear. Hallelujah. I'm only moved by the word of God. Are you only moved by the word of God? Or are you moved by what is asking you and challenging you? Where is your God? Hallelujah. What are you moved by? What are you moved by? What are you moved by? Like I said, is that how do we rise on the wings of faith? How do we rise on the wing of faith? How do we soar eye? How do we soar eye on the wings of faith? Can we open to Isaiah 40? And we'll look from verse 27. Jacob, why do you say? And Israel, why do you assert? My way is hidden from the Lord. And my claim is is ignored by my God. Next verse. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Yahweh is everlasting God, the creator of the whole earth. He never grows faint or weary. There is no limit to his understanding. The next verse. He gives strength to the weary and strengthens the powerless. That is what God does. No matter the situation or the circumstances, when you plug yourself into God, he will give you the strength to constantly be on the mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will constantly give you the faith and the hope to stand on the wings of eagle. Amen. 
Hebrews 11, 1 says it is impossible to see God without faith. So if you want to see the miraculous, you must believe that God has said it, it is settled. Majority of the time when God has said it, we begin to doubt the word. Ah, does the King James know my circumstances? Has someone told him about it? That's why he's telling me what he's telling me. We begin to dissect the word. And in dissecting the word, the word loses its value and does not do what it needs to do. I was reading a book by Ryan Bunkin. And it was telling a story of a man, David, who had an accident in Nigeria, in Makodi. And when, you know the story, sir. And when the guy had the accident, he couldn't speak again. And everyone around him did not believe that he couldn't speak. He got to a stage, he lost hope. He was about committing suicide because he believed there was no hope again. Because he became the permanent landlord in the hospital. Until God sent help to him. He, the help God sent to him boosted his faith in God. And he knew that there was hope for tomorrow. But even knowing there was hope to, for, for tomorrow, weariness came in. And in weariness, he was about losing his strength until God brought the man of God to Makodi. And even that, when he looked at the crowd, he said, uh uh-uh, I'm just an insignificant number in the multitude that is here. But God, to show him that he is in control of his life and destiny, and that all he needed from David was faith, God showed him a sign. I have never seen where anyone has bleed from 11 p.m. at night to 5 a.m. in the morning, and that person is still walking or standing or speaking. But God, to show that he is God, he is in charge and in control of the situation, God had to show him a sign. And that was what brought about the change. What am I saying to you? Until God says it is over, it is not over. Until God says it is over, it is not over. But you can can only stand in that confidence if you are riding on the wings of faith. It is when you are riding on the wings of faith that you can reign in faith in that circumstances and that situation. No matter what the report says, God has said it. It is settled. I may not see it year one. I may not see it year three. I may not see it year seven. God has said it. It is settled. He said, even though heaven and earth will pass away, my word shall surely reway. He says that my word will not return to him void without doing what I have ordained it to do. Do you know what? That same day, David spoke. He didn't need blood transfusion. He didn't need anything. But God spoke. God has settled it. It has been settled by the shed blood of Christ. Why are you believing the lies of the enemy? One of the things I find, the reason why we are not soaring, why we are not riding, why we are not reigning, why we are not running on the wings of faith is because we do not know God for ourselves. We do not know the word. When we know what the word of God says concerning us, where we know how to hear God ourselves, no matter what anybody says to us, we know that God has said, even though heaven and earth will pass away, my word will stand forever. Hallelujah. Are you still with me? Riding on the wings of faith. Rising, running, and reigning on the wings of faith. Nobody knows the hour or the minute. When God is set to do what he wants to do. Apart from God himself. And that's why as Christians we are not allowed to be emotional Christians. What is giving us doubt. What is allowing us to lose our miracle. Is because we are emotional Christians. We, we reign and rule with emotion. We are emotional beings. I don't feel it. I don't see it. I can't touch it. That is it. That's what, why we're not seeing the move of God. 
God is doing what he's doing. Because he said he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still working out his miracle. But we are not receiving in the same strength because we are no longer working in that same volition that God has said it, it is settled. And one of the things that's causing us not to walk in the fullness of that strength is that we are looking for approval of man. And when we look for the approval of man to say that word, you know that word is for you, that's for you, that is when we believe God is speaking. As we are sitting in this auditorium today, God is speaking to you and I, saying to us, trust me, I will surely come forth in my own time. God is speaking to us. He says, keep calm, I'm in control. Are you seeing God in that circumstances? Are you seeing God in that situation? Trusting in God. We need to trust on him, rely on his strength. We need to keep on waiting, tiring. When we talk about waiting, we're not talking about fasting only. There are times that I just lock myself in my bedroom without anything. Just want to hear what God is saying. I always tell God, remove the veil. Let me see beyond the veil. Are you here asking God, show me beyond the veil? Because when God shows you beyond the veil, you begin to see. Because God, God already said concerning you and I, that in the last day, my children, my, my, my boys, my girls, my men, my women will dream dreams, will see great vision. God already spoken it concerning you and I. Are we riding on that truth of the word of God that God has said it and that has been settled? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Waiting upon God. One thing I've come to tell someone in the house this morning that circumstances may look impossible. That you may think you know, even before they condemn you, you know you have been condemned. God said, I should tell you that he's giving wings upon your wings today to soar higher, to above that circumstances, above that storm. I am putting wind upon your wings so that you can soar high. I am giving you the right attitude to take you out of that situation, to take you out of that circumstances, to take you to that place of peace and comfort in my word and in my move and in my glory. See the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. 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 In order to ride, to run, to rise, and to reign on the wings of faith, all God asks from you and I is total surrender. And we're going to rise up this morning. And we're going to, no, choir, can you come? We're going to rise this morning. Because we are going to soar onto the high places. I am not sure that situation that you came into this sanctuary with. I give myself away. I'm not sure what that circumstances or that situation you came to this sanctuary with. But all I have come to tell you this morning is that you will write that circumstances and situation on the tablet and place it before the Lord this morning. So you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you can use me. Bushkin 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I command every defilement, every ailment in you to go out right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree every stranger in this temple, dry up right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I release the peace of the Lord into this vessel in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree that the fire of God will flow into you right now. Of Jesus, thank you, Jesus. All my plan, Lord, I place them in your hand. I give myself away. heaven this morning Jesus is here right now my Jesus is here right now he's here to meet your needs and said the captive is free Oh, Jesus is there right now. Jesus is there right now. Receive in the name of Jesus. Jesus is there right now. Mama, I just want to say to you, to say that God is free. Oh, Jesus is there right now. My Jesus is there right now. Jesus is there right now. He's there to meet your needs and set the captives free. Oh, Jesus is there 
Yeah. 